Hi everyone and thanks for joining this video. Today I'm going to give you five tips and tricks how to use Featherflow better and actually save hours of work every day when you use those simple tricks and tips. And before we jump into this today video, I just want to quickly say thank you very much for all the people who have subscribed to this channel and all the people who are actually paid members to the channel, like Lighty. 5% of my income from YouTube is coming from paid members. So if you want to support this channel, that would be the way. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So tip number one, did you know that you can actually instant reload your test mode or run mode without even uh, compile the code? So when you make changes, into your uh, custom code like custom function, custom action, or custom widget, you don't have to actually compile them and you can still instantly load and you will see the changes. So let me show you what I mean. So if I click this button right now, it will show my name. So this is exactly what it does. And this is an update. Uh, and uh, if I go back to the builder, uh, this is just showing the app state uh, of name. And if I go to the custom code and if I click to change app state, which will be this one. And now you can see that it says the meter. Okay, what about if I want to say instead of the meter, I want to say FF, just save it. Now this will tell you to compile and you get a warning because this is a custom action. Ignore it go back click on instant reload and then very important thing so tip number two actually this is tip one and inside you get tip number two i always double click on instant reload so when you actually see this screen uh i always double instant reload the reason i do double instant reloads is that Sometimes when you click instant once, when you click only once, uh, you actually not get, uh, you get, you will not get the change. So let's see. So now if I click, you can actually see it working. It is working. You can actually see FF. Now uh, just ignore the, like I said, ignore this warning. It says your code needs to compile and this is not green, but still it is actually working. So you don't have to compile the code to instant reload or if you're running local run uh, to see the changes. Uh, so this is tip number one. And tip number two, when you make changes, it doesn't really matter if it is actually a uh, custom code or your app itself. So let's say, for example, this button, I just want to say, let's say button three, for example, and I'll go back to my inst my test mode, sorry, and click once is to reload. And let's see if I going to see the changes because I believe I'm not going to see the changes, but let's see. And this time I actually seeing the changes, but sometimes if you are too quick, uh you will sometimes not going to see the changes so that's why let's say uh, let's uh, change it to five now and let's go to instant reload again let's see if the button will change to five and yeah now it's working but sometimes sometimes uh it is actually not working okay let's see actually if i go back over here and let's say uh full of ff which is further flow what if I want to say FFDC? Because FFDC it's coming. What if I want to write FFDC? And now let's go back over here, instant reload again without compile the code again. So let if I click now, you can actually see FFDC. Now, this time it worked because of this video. This time it worked. But I will tell you, I always click on instant reload. I always click it twice just to make sure because I spent like, uh, like, uh, a lot of time, like hours, uh, to check like why this is not working. And it turns out that I was actually running uh, not the latest version 
So that's why I always click on instant reload twice. Okay, let's move. So tip number three, always, and I mean always, when you open your project, like I assume that you will not have any errors. I will assume that uh, you leave your project without any errors. And that's actually a best practice. And please do that. So please, when you open your project, clear all the errors. When you leave your project, don't leave it with any errors. And this is not a tip. The tip is actually when you uh, first load your project in the day, please click on test mode or local run. And the reason I'm telling that is that that will actually save you a lot of time. So when I click on local run, you can actually see the orange loading uh, that uh, that it says that you can actually see that the local run is currently running. And now I'm actually going to start and do my changes. Like, uh, let's say, for example, uh, I want this button to be like click to say like quick click me. Um, and I want this text to be like, let's say uh, 20 pixels and so on and so forth. So when you're done uh, with all your uh, edits like for example i want to say this home page so when you're done with all your uh edits uh by the time uh you are done with all your edits uh because test modes will usually take like four four six minutes at max depends on the size of the project of course uh, but the idea is that by the time you're go you're done with all your changes you can actually see that the test mode it's already done and you can actually switch to the test mode uh, and you can actually you have a test mode that it's already running so that's a great workflow to always when you open your project uh, at the first time don't forget to actually run uh, test mode and now don't forget when you when you go back to the test mode, when you're run, when you're done with your changes, click on instant reload because this test mode is when you just when you first open your project, so your latest changes will not be there. So just remember that. Click on instant reload when you are done with the changes, uh, and then you want to go back uh, to the test mode, uh, and that goes uh, the same, of course, for uh, run mode uh, as well. So yeah, you can actually see all the changes are here. I'm done uh, and uh, I can be happy now. Tip number four, there is a uh, there is difference between colon and a list view. And probably you have already noticed like the obvious difference that you can actually see on the properties. Uh, the list view have different properties and the different options like uh, ordering, reverse, uh, and the colon doesn't have those options, but the colon has other options uh, for the colon properties like spacing and so on. But I'm not talking about those differences. I'm talking about the way you're actually generating dynamic children's and the way that uh, those two uh, widgets are actually working. I actually have uh, like explain that in very details in this video. It's called Mastering sc uh, Scroll Custom Items in a List and Infinity Scroll and Mastering List View. Uh, and it's actually 30 minutes long. I'm not going to get into details, but I'm just going to say what are the main difference. The main difference is that if you have a colon and you have items inside this colon, it doesn't really matter if those items are generated like from a query or they're coming from an app state or a page state. It doesn't really matter where they're coming from. They will actually load uh, instantly. And they will load, like if you have, for example, 100 items, they will load all the 100 items. If you have 1 million items, they will all load, they, it will load 1 million items. Even if um, you don't see them in the page, they will still load. 
And if you have, uh, for example, uh, if you have a, a component uh, that you have an action uh, that is uh, on initialization, uh, it will actually run on every single uh, component, every single item that you have in your uh, colon. Uh, the difference between the list view is that when you have, for example, 1 million items, or okay, let's say you have 100 items, it, they, it will only load the items that you see on the screen. So the items that are loaded in the screen will be the only items that are going to be loaded. And if you have components in your inside your list view on initialization, it will only run when uh, the uh, widget is viewable inside the screen. So when you scroll down, um, your items will load. The items that are on the screen will load. And when you scroll up, uh, the uh, so when you scroll down, sorry, the items will load. And those items that were on top, they will actually disload. So uh, the uh, the uh, the reason is that it will free uh, some space uh, in your app. Uh, so it is only going, like I said, it's going only to show the items that are in the view. Uh, and if you scroll up, so if you scroll down, they will unload, but if you scroll up, they will load again. So it's not like uh, they will load uh, and when you scroll down and you scroll up, uh, they were already loaded, so they will not load. No, they will actually load again. Uh, so that's very important to know and you can uh, really uh, do like amazing things like in the video uh, that I just talked about mastering scroll. And I actually using that technique alone, I actually managed to do infinity loading uh, without even without uh, any custom code uh, with any backend like Firebase, Superbase, um, you name it, API calls. Um, and you can also have like an items in between uh, your items. So for example, the best uh, uh, example is if you want to have like on every single, after on every single fifth element and to have like a commercial or something like that or a pop-up or something like that. So that was tip number four. Let's move on to the last one. And the last tip, tip number five is, did you know that cloud functions, when you deploy a cloud function inside Firebase, um, it depends on the cloud function. So if it's without any parameters, it is actually a very simple get request. So you can actually get it with a get request. And if, is, if it has parameters, it is actually a post request. Uh, so you can actually go to API calls and you can actually call this uh, custom function. So I have deployed, deployed this custom function, which is says hello world, and it just says hello from Firebase. And if I switch to my Firebase project, you can actually see that this is my custom function. And uh, if the custom, because there are different custom functions, I actually have a video about that. It's kickstart uh, with custom function in my channel. If you haven't watched that, please do. But if it's like, uh, let's say the normal or the default custom function, you get a URL uh, for your custom function. So when you actually copy this URL uh, and then open it in your browser, this will actually run a get request. And indeed, you can actually see that I'm getting hello from Firebase. And like I said, if you have arguments in your custom function, this will actually give you, uh, this will actually, uh, imp uh, this will actually generate a post. You can, you can hit the cloud function. I'm, I'm talking about custom function. It's not a custom function. Of course, it's a cloud function. I'm talking about cloud function, sorry, about before. So you can actually hit the cloud function using a post request if you have parameters. Uh, so using that technique, for example, uh, you say, why do I need that? What is the tip for that? 
well, you can actually uh, use external tools uh, for like anything that you can do that you can think of regarding your project. So for example, I just give you one example. You can actually use that technique to create your own API calls for your app so you can uh, other uh, users or providers can actually connect to your app or to your database, to your Firebase or to any uh, other backend that you have. Uh, but especially if through Firebase because uh, cloud, function are, cloud functions are actually used in Firebase. And uh, yeah, there are like a, a, a thousands uh, ways that you can actually use that. Uh, but I, uh, but that's that's the tip actually. I don't know if you know that, uh, but without parameters, it's a simple get request. And with parameters, it's a simple post request. Just look at the URL that is generated in Firebase uh, functions. And uh, that's uh, all that you need. So thank you very much for watching. That was it for those uh, five tips and tricks. I really hope that you like this video. If you like it, please like it uh, below so I can know I can create more of those. Uh, I have some ideas uh, so I can actually create more of those if you like that. Uh, and also, uh, again, thank you very much for all my paid subscribers and a special that you can see them over here actually. And a special thanks uh, to a determined poor beer uh, and also to uh, Mariano Martinez, uh, or sorry, Montanes. So if you want to misspell your name or mispronounce your name uh, as well, please become an elite member, uh, which would be amazing. Uh, and also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. So I'm trying to reach 5,000 subscribers uh, for my next goal to live stream every week on my Discord. The link is below, actually, if you haven't joined my Discord already. So thank you and see you next time.